The Minnesota Vikings had a very tough day, and there are a lot of people who deserve to have some blame and face some criticism after this one. I think Kirk Cousins is one of them. I think he was not good, and let's talk about exactly why, starting off with this play. This is a good example of, I think, a tough situation. Dallas' defense is good. Uh, you know, the Vikings' offense is good, but still, tough defense. You are going to have to make some tough plays if you're going to win this football game and move the ball down the field, and this was relatively early on in the game. So, Dallas, they're showing pressure. They have six guys at the line, but it actually will be a very traditional coverage. It's going to end up being just a cover three zone. You see the concept that Minnesota has on the screen. It's a good concept against this coverage. It's actually a great concept against this coverage where you have, you know, basically two layers of attack. You have kind of an underneath layer. You also have something over the middle. And then, hey, if none of those are open, maybe you could throw it uh, to your halfback on the bottom of the screen, send a prayer that way. But realistically, that's just taking away uh, Dallas defender, not really looking there. So it's mostly the, the four guys who are going to be in the middle of the field that you're paying attention to. Two underneath, two over the middle. Now, I'm assuming when they called this play, it's actually designed to get the ball underneath. I'm assuming that's what they're trying to do here because it's worth mentioning the situation. This is the third down and short. They're trying to get to the 35-yard line. So for Kirk Cousins, that's his mindset is, okay, if this is zone coverage, typically what's going to happen is the two uh, middle routes will be the ones that Dallas covers. You then kind of th hit one of the more underneath routes. Hopefully one of those two guys is you know, able to make the grab, turn the corner, and pick up some yards. But keep in mind, yes, I still do have one more thing to say before we start showing this play. Keep in mind the very first thing that I said. Dallas is showing pressure. They have six guys at the line. And so while two of those guys are going to drop back in the coverage, it's just different when you drop back in the coverage after showing pressure versus if you were just in coverage from the beginning because you start at a different spot. Watch as when Cousins takes a snap, they both are definitely covering underneath. The sort of over the middle stuff is open right here. And while there is some traffic in front, Kirk Cousins does have a throwing lane right now. And in my opinion, this is a throw that Kirk Cousins should absolutely make. What he shouldn't do is what he's going to do, which is he looks behind him and says, oh, Micah Parsons is creating some pressure. Well, let me just outrun Micah Parsons. That's a good idea. Cousins decides to run instead. I just think he was not ready for throwing the ball over the middle there, but he probably should have been, especially again, you know, Cousins gets paid a lot. You get paid to make that read and make that throw. Instead, he fumbles the football, giving it to Dallas. This was early on in the game. And again, momentum is a thing. Uh, I don't know if it actually matters, but, uh, you know, potentially you could argue that if this play is different, maybe the rest of the game is different, but who knows? But like even something like this is another example of this is a little bit later on in the game. So it's not like a blowout at this point or anything, but this is still, maybe you need to start taking more chances. It's going to be a zone coverage play that they're going up against. That's what Dallas is in. They're showing zone and it's going to be zone. Cousins takes the snap. Cousins is going to look towards TJ Hawkinson over the middle who this is a tough play. It is. It's not wide open, but there is a window to make this throw, and the question is, do you make this throw or not? It's a third down. You have to get to the 50-yard line, so getting the first down here would be a, you know, relatively significant. Cousins thinks about it, but then decides to hold on to it and eventually gets sacked instead. So, again, I think I would have liked to see him make that throw. I do. I think I would have liked to see him take that chance. He did not want to take the chance. He didn't want to make throw an interception and make a bad situation worse, which I do understand there is logic behind, but I would like to see him make that throw personally. Now, it's worth mentioning, though, I'm you know, Cousins deserves that blame. I think that's fair, but there is a lot of people that deserve blame in this game. I think something like this, where I've highlighted one Dallas defender, it's going to be a play-action pass, although he is rushing the passer from the start, and watch him on this play. I mean, very quickly gets into where at that point, there was nothing Cousins could do. The second he got his head turned around, there was a pressure. I mean, you know, a halfback tried to get in the way after the immediate pressure didn't do too much. So that's not Cousins' fault, right? You know, rest of the team isn't playing well, or Dallas is playing well. Whatever you want to say, that's definitely something that was very clear to see when you watched the film as well. You had something like this, where what's going to happen on this play, it's just going to be um, a man coverage play. Uh, and, you know, it's a relatively good concept. You have, first off, you know, man across the board, only a single safety deep. So that's already a pretty solid situation of three receivers in that side of the field. Two of them are going to run deep over the middle. You then have your receiver who's lined up uh, furthest away from the sideline, cut towards the sideline. And with all the traffic, there could be a window to make this throw. 
right when this play begins, you're going to see Cousins look down the field, and at this point, he kind of has to make his throw. You know, you kind of have to throw for anticipation a little bit here, but hey, you're down in the game. You got to start making some throws, make some stuff happen. At least that's the mindset for Cousins. You see KJ Osborne at this point in the game. Uh, you know, there's a window. He's open, and this is going to be kind of almost like a a chemistry thing. I think Osborne is going to turn in a weird way to the ball. Watch Osborne turn kind of towards his right, and then he has to twist himself all the way around, and is just not quite able to make the catch. That, that was a good throw. I mean, again, could it be a little bit farther? I'll let you be the judge, but that was a relatively good throw. It was a catchable ball. Osborne just turned the wrong way on that one, in my opinion. So, you know, there are some, kind of these little small things like this that went against the Vikings, and when they were already playing a good defense and making some mistakes, I think that, you know, having a couple of these can really compound the mistakes and is what caused such a disastrous day. We also saw something like this, which is going to be, so again, it's actually a very similar concept, just in a goal line type situation, or at least a red zone type situation here. It's, uh, you're trying to get TJ Hawkinson the ball though. And again, this is kind of what we talked about with TJ Hawkinson. Hey, Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, those are the other two receivers on that side of the field, they're the guys who are taking away attention. This way, you're going to get TJ Hawkinson with some pretty good one-on-one -on -one matchups. Watch, Cousins takes a snap. Cousins is going to look in that direction. He's going to fire in that direction. I mean, you see, the play concept worked. Hawkinson got open. And really, I would say this is a good throw in just a drop from Hawkinson, which again, this stuff happens, right? It is football. Mistakes do happen. So how much do I kill the Vikings for making these mistakes? Not too much. Everyone has games where they just make too many mistakes. They make some inopportune mistakes and, you know, these things kind of compound on, you know, themselves, right? What are the, I think it's the, the maybe the more interesting way to uh, talk about this now is what are the serious issues, the issues that could actually be a thing in the future, and then what are the, you know, issues that exist but aren't, like, you know, a big deal. I think, you know, the, the TJ Hawkinson dropping a pass, I think that, you know, uh, KJ Osborne turning the wrong way on a pass, and I think that, you know, an offensive lineman getting beat, it happens, you know, and the, the offensive lineman getting beat on the play I showed three plays earlier was almost a communication thing more than anything, so those are errors that they happened, they're not great. You want to see them not happen. To me, the only really concern I think I have with Minnesota at this point is the fact that, if we're being honest, I would like to see Kirk Cousins you know, uh, be a little bit more of a risk taker in this spot. I think I would. I think that your team is very good, but sometimes you're going to play other good teams, and sometimes you are going to have to kind of uh, let it rip a little bit. Don't be afraid to throw an interception. He's not someone I think of as like an overly cautious quarterback. He's definitely a you know, I would say a bit on the cautious side, but nothing major. You know, he will put the ball in harm's way at times for sure. Uh, I think maybe this would have been a game to put the ball in harm's way a little bit more. And he started doing that a little bit later on, but early on he did not. And maybe that's just lesson learned when you play Dallas again, which you very well might. You know, these two teams have very good records. They could meet in the playoffs. If they do, then, you know, maybe uh, take a little bit more chances early on would be the main thing, I would think. But, you know, again, nothing majorly concerning. Bad games do happen. You know, uh, I don't think it's totally fair to completely overreact. Uh, I still think that we've seen more good from more good than bad with the Vikings. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.